What's up guys, I go back to the kitchen where it's cooking up videos. I've always been curious as to what goes on in a designer's day for 24 hours. So today I'm actually gonna be following Lisa for 24 hours because something great happened to her with her TikTok and I'll let her explain actually why uh, we're going downtown today. Hey guys, so I was fortunate one of my TikToks of my designs went viral. It was a red corset. And so now we're going downtown to get some supplies for it and to fulfill the orders I got from the TikTok. Hey! Guys, make sure to follow her TikTok because she does have some really dope TikToks, um, all fashion stuff. So if you're into fashion, clothes, make sure to check out her TikTok. But anyways, that's where we're going downtown because one of her TikToks blew up. Now, we had to get more she materials. Got and now she got orders. Got materials to fulfill these orders. Hey! All right, so let's head downtown. We are now downtown. As you guys can see, there are a lot of cars. Parking here is horrendous. Yes, it took an hour to get here. So if we can park, I'll pick a camera back up. $9 parking. All right, we are now parked on top of a parking garage. No. Just... Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, we're on the rooftop. Now we're going to the first floor. So I'll give you guys a little sneak preview of what goes on over here. So there's all these stores with this fabric, fabric, fabric. You just have so many options here. So we'll be sure to keep on uh, walking around and show you guys the whole process. <laughs> Let's get it. All right, guys, we just got out of that store. You guys saw there's uh, so much going on. I'll show you guys what Lisa is actually working on, the corset. It's actually really cool, really pretty looking. Show you guys after we get done. It's pretty hectic out here. She needs a couple more things. So we're going to do this. And also, I see, I see something over there. Can you guys guess what that is? Oh, my fingers are That's a food truck. It's noon. You know what that means? Oh, and they got... The one thing I like about downtown though is they got good food. They got food everywhere. So uh, we're gonna hit this store, I think, and then get some food. Hi right, guys, we are in another store. I mean, there's like probably hundreds of store downtown, but this store is especially big. This place is very organized compared to every other store we went to. But they got like names, labels, like, what does this say? It says notions and patterns. Go find it. So, so you want white in this? Okay guys, so I'm gonna look for white. She wants thin, white. I give up, I give up. I don't know how she does this. We got the materials. Um, we're gonna, I'll show you guys what she's making. Time to get out of downtown, get back home because traffic's about to hit. I'm starving. It is, what time is it? It's like 1.30 or something. I don't even know what time, but definitely past lunchtime. I'm getting a little hangry, so time to get some food and get back home. Woo! We have made it back to the car. Lisa, did you get everything that you needed? Yes. So you can work on your, uh, your order now? Actually, you can't because you need fuel. You need food. I do you. need food. I'm also like pretending I'm not gonna procrastinate. Start a new Netflix show, so. <laughs> but we're gonna get food first. So I'm gonna excited to get some Korean food. Korean food! Cake time! Here we go! The nice thing about Korean restaurants is you get a lot of side dishes. I mean, this is like, you know, is a good amount, but sometimes they come out with a whole table. Like, you don't even need to order an entree, to be honest. You just have to order a water and you get all this, basically. Show up just for the side dishes. I've seen some people do that, actually. I'll show you guys what we got, though. I got something called kimchi chicken. So it's basically kimchi and soup, and they have, like, meat in there. And then Lisa got something called sundubu, which is, like, tofu soup. It's really good. This is one of my classic favorite Korean dishes. As you guys can see, we have cleared our food. Okay guys, we have to go home because I have a package outside. Um, I have to get, it's been there for about two hours now, so time to go home. Woo, just got back from the restaurant and the supplies. Guys, we are about to make a corset. Here is what it looks like, guys. Ba -bam. <laughs> you can get it on Lisa's website. What is the website called? And they're all made to order, right? It's my name, Lisa and Hong. Have them inserted here. <laughs> made to order just means that we make the item as you order it so mm. that we decrease the waste that is in fashion instead of having a large inventory being held at like a warehouse or something, we make it as you order it. Ooh. It's a little bit more sustainable, but that's also that's why our prices are a bit more expensive. But everything is like custom made for you. Lisa's gonna show me how to make this corset and um, hopefully I don't mess it up. Ah! Woo! Okay, 
We got the materials. We got an envelope for some reason. What is this for? We'll get there. Okay. okay. We're gonna get started. What's we the first step? We need wool fabric. This is our base. And this is our pattern folder. This pattern folder. Pattern is like a blueprint of what the actual corset will look like. Okay. It says here, size zero, two to four, and six pieces. So to get started, we see there's six pieces. Okay. And on here it says cut two. Cut that two. That means we'll have 12 pieces total. Okay. Just, just for that part. No, we're not even cut 12 of this part. We cut all of this. Oh, so two. So there's six patterns. There's six pieces. Six pieces and two of each. Yes. So we're gonna start by laying out the fabric. Okay, guys. I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see. Cause it is like a sheer fabric. Yeah. I mean, literally, like as soon as you unfold it, I couldn't even see it. And now I'm here. So it's folded in half, and then what's? And this line here means the grain line. Grain line means that like you just want to line it up on the fabric to where the selvage is. You're going to pin it down at the top just to hold the pattern piece to the fabric because I don't have fabric weights. The fabric weights are these heavy things you put on the fabric so it goes like this. So instead of pinning it, there's just something holding it down for you to oh, cut around. Oh, because I was going to ask like if you're poking holes in it, do you have to keep making the patterns? No. Every time? Oh, you just keep using it even though it has holes in it? You, I, I do it till it falls apart. <laughs> okay, I mean that's a very good use of your resources. Yes. I will say. I just have to pin it like that? You just pin it to where you feel like it's secure enough to cut around. So we got one, six patterns. We'll put this one right here, right? Mm -hmm. Is this already Sweet. doubled? The center line. Oh, this one. Yeah. Yeah, it has to go parallel? Yes. Okay, so now we're, we are parallel. Now I want to pin. Oh my god, this is the funny part. Most people can't do this right the first time. Really? Because I'm about to do it on my first try. If you don't stab yourself. Oh, he did it. Look at that. Come on. Did, did it go through both though? <laughs> is the problem. Oh, see, went through both too. Guys, I think I am a nat. It's a little crooked. Right there. Beautiful. Now, we got to make sure we secure both, both sides. Like so. You have to. <laughs> okay, most people don't lift up the fabric because. Why? It could cause the fabric to wrinkle and. Honestly, not <laughs> bad besides the uh, the glass too. Because I was trying to fit everything on one sheet to save some space, but. You know, it would have fit if you just. Squished the first two. Look at myself. There's a lot of space between these, and then as it gets towards the end, it gets narrower and narrower, and then it's basically off the ledge right now. <laughs> this is gonna be the interesting part. Some people also find this difficult to cut the fabric. Don't cut the paper. So like we have fabric scissors here. These are made for just to cut fabric because you don't want to cut paper with it because it'll dull the scissors. Mm, yeah, I remember the first time I tried these scissors, Lisa actually yelled at me because I cut paper with it. These are really expensive. They're like 80 bucks and that's the most I'll ever spend on a pair of scissors. 80 bucks? I didn't even know like scissors came in different types. And you know your scissors are working well when you can cut to the tip. So do you cut pretty close to it or do you cut around it? You want to cut as close as possible because any like little piece you add, like if I added a little bit, it'll be multiplied. So it'll make the size incorrect. So any mistakes you make in sewing, it, it's amplified because of how many pieces they are. So let's say you accidentally add an eighth to one piece or to all the pieces and you just increase the size by a couple, of, like an inch or oh, something. Oh, so you have to get as precise. So let's see how precise you were. So there's the paper. I can't even see the, the fabric behind it. Good enough. <laughs> That's how good it was. That's how, I'm nervous now. And then I like to just take the pin out until there's only one at the top and still keep it with a piece so we know what piece it is. Why am I getting nervous now? Now that I'm actually going to do it. Here it goes. Now I am cutting. I am cutting. Where'd it go? The moment I saw your pattern, I was like, I'm going to go nowhere near that one, but I'll do my best. Oh, I can go all the way to the tip. I just, I literally just, was, just heard you say that. Okay. Some heavy breathing here. <laughs> okay, I am done now. What do you think? I want you to uh, judge it. What you got? What you think? Okay, let's put it on this so that we can see it better. Okay. You did a good job. Did I? Actually? Yeah, you did. Actually, look. It kind of lines up pretty well. I know. It kind of lines up. No, you did a great job. All right, guys. We got to still do four more of these. So we're going to get to it, get finish these up, and then move on to the next step. <gasps> Last part of the patterns, guys. Lisa, I'm almost done. Yay, finally. Finally. I, 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 went, I did this in five seconds, guys. Yay, Yay! We did it! So we got all the patterns cut now. Now, what's the next step? 
I'm not gonna sew them together. Oh, this man. should be the fun part. I don't think Stowe, have you ever used a sewing machine? I have not. Maybe in home ec when I was in middle school, but that's about it. Time to go sew. We are now in Lisa's studio. It's called Juki. The no, I'm just saying Juki should sponsor me. That was like free advertising. She's setting it up now. Well, okay, so we're gonna start with winding the bobbin, which is this part. We're winding the bobbin onto where? Right here. Okay. Then we're gonna click it in. So this uh, goes under, the bobbin goes underneath the machine and will provide that secondary thread. <laughs> Once the machine's on, now it's on. Okay. The thread light indicates that it's on. Okay. So that's just to fill up a bobbin. Yes. Um, and then we're gonna take out this part from underneath. What you see? We just take that from <laughs> underneath the machine. There's like a lot of secret compartments down here. Hold on, let me show you guys what you. It's so dirty underneath there. Clean your machines, PSA. So then we're gonna take this bobbin. Okay. And we're gonna load it into this holder. <laughs> okay. A bobbin holder. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gonna put it in like this. Okay. And then and then look at clip. Like that. Yep. This is piece one that we are going to sew. So this is the center front. We're gonna sew the center front first. All right, let's get it. So the the pattern pieces have three eighths seam allowance. Okay. So you want to line the edge of the fabric to this one mark right here. Oh, okay. You always start with your sewing needle in the down position, just so it doesn't tangle. Now we're gonna get started. We're gonna go forward a little bit. Use this as the back stitch. This ties off your thread, your sewing. So my back. I'm going forward. See? You went back so that it, you can make a clear start, right? No, it's just so it knots it. Oh, okay. So it doesn't move. Yeah, and then you'll just gently guide your fabric through. And then you're going to stomp on it with your heel. Oh, whoa, whoa. And then it'll tie it off. So that's the first. Yep, and now I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to do the rest? Like all of these? Yeah. How fast does it go? Okay, we got a curve here. I'm going to and straighten it like so. Right before it hits the needle. Oh, oh, over here, so you know, all sharp. Oh, hold on, what's going on here? Actually, you're doing a great job. You're going so slow, but great job. Okay, we're at the end now. That's scary. I don't know if I can do that. I didn't do that 12 times. <laughs> this is what I did. Uh, I will let Lisa be the judge of this one real fast. So what would you rate this out of? A 10? No, you're like, I'd still do an 8. Really? Look at the tension. It's all smooth and stuff. Thank you. No, you did a great job. Oh! Okay, guys. So I just got done with the... Um, yeah, he just got done piecing together his part. And we have decided that maybe it's best that I continue to sew the rest of it because he's taking quite a bit of time and that would increase the prices of my corsets because the cost of labor just went up by a hundred times based on stove style. I, um... I would like to make a corset before I die. If I wear it like this... Yeah, just for your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it keeps like sending this way? Yeah. Stove. Yes? I'm sorry to have to say, your Project Runway challenge has been completed and it, you have failed. I failed? What do you mean? Simply because of your time! I took too long? Yeah, you took way too long. Guys, I he guess I, I failed today's challenge, but... He just got relieved from his duties. <laughs> but he may do other fashion challenges in the future, right? Guys, yeah, if you guys like this type of challenge, make sure to comment down below by here is Lisa finishing up this corset and just because like he said it was my birthday I kind of want to have a birthday outfit I can't spend all day on this one that's true and I feel bad and guys if you guys want me to do another challenge uh, regarding fashion where Lisa can maybe teach me something comment down below here's Lisa making a corset <laughs> yo I can't believe you have finished this I will say it took her Probably the amount of time it took me to cut the first pattern, it took her to basically finish the rest of the corset. It looks so sick. So guys, that's what the corset looks like. It looks fire, literally from scratch. You guys saw what it looked like in the beginning, and now it looks like this. 
Right. This is what Lisa does, guys. She literally makes something out of nothing. Yeah, that's a cool thing. It's just like we really started with just scraps of fabric. Nobody knew where it was going, not even I. <laughs> not even you. And now we're here with a beautiful corset. I think Stella could rock this. Maybe it's no, 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 no. If this gets, if this video gets 100,000 likes, which it won't, I'll wear it. That's why I'm saying it. Okay guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I am not going to be wearing this. Till next time.